Phoenix is a simplicity. It's a large gold oxide run of mine leach project, which is really essentially an earth moving project. You mine the ore from the top of the hill and you put it on the pad. Hello to the viewers tuning in to Assay TV. I'm pleased to be speaking with Alex Black, who's president, CEO, and director of Rio2 Mining. And of course, Rio2 is a precious metals exploration and development company with a portfolio of Chilean and Peruvian assets that we're going to be hearing all about today. Hey, Adam, good to meet you. I finally made it to Assay TV after a, a, a bit of uh, waiting for our um, milestone release that we put out recently. Um, well, look, let, let's go into a little bit more depth because this is the first time we've indeed spoken and had Rio 2 on Assay TV. Um, give us a snapshot of the company, an overview um, for investors who are listen who are new to um, new to your company. Yeah, Rio 2 uh, listed back in late 2016. Uh, we're a one asset company. In 2018, about August of 2018, we uh, merged with a company called Atacama Pacific who had uh, eight years before that discovered this project, which was then called Cerro Maracunga. Uh, we renamed it to the Phoenix Gold Project because there's so many projects in that Maracunga region with the Maracunga name, we just thought we'd try and, uh, uh, you know, give a unique identification to this one. Um, so we took it on uh, and basically have done a little bit of confirm confirmation and uh, grade control drilling at the project. It was about 7,000 odd metres that we did back in 2019. But um, the project is, is very big, uh, measured and indicated resources of 5 million ounces contained within a $1,500 uh, pit shell and uh, 1.4 million ounces of inferred uh, within that pit shell. Um, so it's, it's a big deposit. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, like a lot of juniors uh, that are run by geologists, they get to a certain point, they don't know what to do with the next. Um, and we are mine builders, so uh, we, we decided to take this project on and we've put our foot down on the floor as, as hard as we can and we're accelerating as fast as we can for this project to production. So what we're doing as a company is pretty unique in, as far as a fast track goes. Why is the company called Rio 2? Uh, because there was a Rio 1. It was called Rio Alto Mining. So it was a company that I founded back in 2009. Uh, we took that company uh, and started off with an asset that we bought for mine gold in Peru called uh, La Reina. Uh, we built that in record time, brought that into production in 2011. And uh, then we acquired a, a company called Saladin um, which had the Showindo Gold Project. We then built that mine. So we built two gold mines in the last 10 years with the management team that I've put together uh, in Rio 2. We're all the same people. And, um, you know, this is our third gold mine in, three, in 10 years. And uh, it happens to be in Chile. Same uh, description, large, low-grade heap leach deposit, which we are very good at... Uh, building and running. And, um, and so we grew Rio Alto from a $12 million company in 2009 to a $1.2 billion takeout by Tahoe Resources in 2015. So we made a lot of people, a lot of money, uh, including ourselves. And we decided, and I decided I had had, had enough because um, I was hoping to go a little bit longer. So formed Rio 2, put the old management team together, and here we are. It's, 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 it's really uh, the same team, and we know what we're doing, and, and we're going to build another gold mine very short, shortly. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Yes, um, it's certainly a credit that you've done this before, and you're able to bring a lot of that team and leverage uh, that expertise again. Um, yeah. so, so I live in Peru. My management team from the old Rio Alto is in Peru. Uh, good place to have your technical base because it's, it's uh, contiguous with Chile. Chile's to the south. We built a team of people in Chile as well. And obviously the team of people in Chile will grow, but it will be overseen by our technical management team in, in, in Peru, in Lima. 
Um, so uh, really good fit. We're in the middle of the EIA, EIA approval process right now um, and review process. Uh, we're in the second round of observations. That's going on really well and no red flags there. Um, and we are guiding that we get uh, EIA approval by around February, March next year. And uh, we've just announced a financing, uh, which we can talk more about in a minute, uh, which uh, takes us all the way through to production. So we're fully financed all the way to production. Yeah, excellent. It's a great position to be in. And yeah, I wanted to come on to that. So um, this is great news that you're fully financed. Um, it's totaling somewhere between 125, 135 million, as I read from the news uh, release, um, and that will fund the construction of the mine. Um, but let's break that down a little bit because it's it's quite um, uh, a structured package, I should say, um, in terms of its layers. And you've got some really significant partners involved in terms of getting this uh, mine into construction, which is again um, a credit to the project. Um, so breaking it down in its parts, you've got a public offering and then also a, a private placement as well. Can you talk us through those elements? Okay, well, the whole thing was to get a flexible financing package that allows us to do a lot of work and expend money before we get our construction permit. Now, our construction permit is guided for about August of next year. Typically, what companies do is they wait for the construction permit and then they go from there. Because we understand the permitting system very, very well and very clearly in Chile, we're able to do certain things um, before we get to construction. And so essentially what our construction permit becomes is an assembly uh, permit because we're going to fabricate, put together a lot of the components of the project prior to the construction permit and then uh, have a very quick assembly period um, later next year. So we're guiding at the moment construction permit in about August next year with first gold, hopefully, if we can push it really hard, hopefully first gold by, by the end of the next year. Um, and if not, you know, January or so of next year. So uh, of the year after, sorry. Um, so, so very quick. Now the financing to do that, to be flexible, we looked at some equity and we've kept the equity down to a small component. The equity is 20 million US that we've agreed to um, get from the public and also our one of our financiers. And one of our financiers is Wheat and Precious Metals. They are providing us with a gold stream um, of $50 million. Uh, and part of that was we asked them if they would contribute to the equity component to the tune of about 5 million US. And they are doing that. We're just about to close that financing. I'm speaking to you the day before, and I'm not sure when this is gonna be televised, but um, uh, the financing will be closed. Um, they will be a contributor to that. They're in the private placement component of that because of regulations, they can't be in the public uh, part of that financing. And everybody will see that we've done a very comprehensive financing. And the interesting thing is, just so people understand, the dilution that we've we've done is about 20% of our um, outstanding shares. So it's not a huge fin equity financing. It's a small equity financing, which is what we're very conscious of, of doing, is not um, over diluting our shareholders, of which we're, we're big shareholders too. Um, and, and so we can come in. Now, we can... Um, five, uh, gold stream is broken into two components. It's a total of $50 million. $25 million uh, is released once we uh, complete definitive documentation, which is going to happen over the next couple of weeks. So we get $25 million uh, from Wheaton then. And then we also have agreed to get $25 million of the stream payment in um, when we get our EIA approved, which once again is guided for February, March next year. So that allows us to do a lot of things. And then basically we have uh, BNP Paribas, big international bank, big financier of projects in LATAM, particularly Chile. Um, they love this project, so does Wheaton. Um, they are gonna come in once we get our construction permit on a senior secured basis. 
And that's going to be somewhere in the range of 50 to $60 million, depending on what we need. Um, so we've not committed to a final amount there. What we've entered into is an indicative proposal with them, and it'll be a vanilla uh, debt package of LIBOR plus you know, a few percentage points. Pretty straightforward. But yes, as you said, having wheat and precious metals and also BNP Paribas as um, big um, uh, supporters of our project really validates what we're trying to do um, with, with Phoenix Gold in Chile. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, there's certainly the partners you want on board of that uh, standing if you're, you know, moving through the phases of construction. Um, and on that note, we know about the EIA that you mentioned. Uh, that's essential. Are there any other permits or any other milestones within the construction phase that are going to be put into place um, this year as you ramp up? Well, um, once you file an EIA, which we did in April of last year, you start permitting at that point. So we've been getting various permits and going through a you know, pretty rigorous permitting process, which culminates not even with the construction permit, because there's still more permits you get after that. Um, but all those permits that we put in, we've been putting in place and we will put in place, allow us to do this progressive build that we're, we're talking about. Um, so really the next milestone is the EIA approval, which is February, March next year. Yep. Um, in the meantime, there's lots of activity that will be going on. And one of the big pluses that we have is that our project is located at four and a half thousand, between four and a half thousand metres and 4,900 4, metres at the peak of the, peak of the mountain. Um, which is great. I mean, there's lots of projects at those sorts of altitudes. But we bought an infrastructure site 20 kilometres away from the project, uh, which we call LINCE, L-I-N-C-E. Um, and that's at 3,200 metres. And that's a staging point. That's where our camp will be. That's where fabrication of the plant will be. And so we will eventually bring all that stuff up to the, uh, the all the components up to the uh, project uh, once we get our construction permit, that's when we do the assembly process. There's also permits in place that will allow us to put in certain infrastructure at the mine site as a prelude to construction, like access roads and other things. So we, we've got this thing worked out really nicely. We're building this completely differently to anybody else. And, and if you know the landscape in Chile, Chile is very much dominated by big companies. And big companies typically wait until they get everything in place and they can afford to wait because they've got, you know, 10 other projects scattered throughout the world. We're a one asset company. So we, we have to look at this like we did with Rio Alto and La Reina and Shell Window and just run as fast as we can. And the whole thing is, as we know, the gold price is very buoyant right now. Um, and we want to capitalise on that uh, uh, position of the gold price um, because our project basically uh, breaks even around $1,100. So anything above $1,100 is cream for us. And, um, you know, we're just trying to run as fast as we can to that point. So we're doing something that not many other companies would do, but that's something we're used to doing and, and we've done twice before with the couple of builds that we went through before. The other thing about Phoenix is a simplicity. It's a large gold oxide run of mine leach project, which is really essentially an earth moving project. You mine the ore from the top of the hill and you put it on the pad. You mine the ore, put it on the pad. So it's very simple, very easy. And the leach kinetics are very, very good. We put out um, some metallurgical test results that we did on top of a multitude of test results that were done in the past but we, we specified and focused on run of mine leach and we came up with some very good numbers and that's the way we're going to go. So there's no crusher, there's no agglomerator, there's no fines in this material and there's no conveyors. So it's very simple and that's the way you want to build a gold mine, simple, simple, simple. And if you, can, if you do that, you can mine half gram dirt, which is what we're going to do and we're going to make a lot of money on it. So... 
a lot of people have looked at this project and said, oh, you got 400 million tonnes, but it's all half ground. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You can make a lot of money out of that. As long as the metallurgical, uh, metallurgy is simple, as long as the mining is simple, as long as you're in a mining jurisdiction, which allows you to find skilled people to be able to uh, put all this together, which we are in, you know, the best mining jurisdiction probably in South America, uh, in Chile. So, you know, uh, we've got all the components working for us in getting this to production. Certainly, that's excellent. Um, with the simplicity of the operation and some of the advantages there you describe, um, does that bring sort of uh, more validation locally for the process and for this? Um, and I'm leaning towards sort of the ESG characteristics here that as you scale up this project, you're going to get more in the spotlight for with investors, with with backers, with financiers. And what's, what's the sort of um, response um, around those factors? Yeah, very interesting. Um, you know, in Chile, let's just look at Chile. Chile, gold mining in Chile. Not a lot of gold mining in Chile. There are four Canadian listed public companies in Chile. The only one that's producing is Yamana Gold. They have the only mine in production right now. And then you have uh, Kinross, who are building, uh, currently uh, restarting La Coipa. Then you've got gold fields with Solaris Norte. They're actually building Solaris Norte now. And then there's Rio too. So the company we're in is that company, Yamana, Kinross, gold fields, Rio too. So we're the only junior company that's turning on a gold mine anytime soon. Obviously, there's small gold mines in, in the country, but from a Canadian publicly listed perspective, that's the group. So we're pretty unique. Now, all those projects that I mentioned, the other three companies, are all involving very complex metallurgy and the construction of tailings, uh, dams, deposition of tailings, etc. We don't have any of that. We are building the only gold oxide heat lease project in Chile right now. So from an environmental perspective, you know, it's very simple. And, um, and yes, you're right. It, it does impact our ESG impact um, in the country. Uh, socially, we've done really well. We are in accordance with um, the indigenous, because in, in Chile, it's all about indigenous groups. <laughs> When you see photos of our project uh, on the internet, you think we, they were taken from Mars Rover, you know, because at the end of the day, there's nothing there. So there's yeah. no populations. Our nearest population center is Copiapo, which is 150 kilometers to the west from where we are. And there's no um, uh, settlements of people along the road that goes from Copiapo to, to our project. Our project sits on a main road, which goes from Copiapo to Argentina. It's actually a tourist road, not very used. Kinross are using it for La Coipa, which is right next door to where we are. La Coipa, you can see the La Coipa operations from the top of the hill from where we're standing, uh, where we're mining. Um, so um, yeah, it's a great infrastructure, good ESG because it's a very simple project. You're spot on. You're about the only guy that's picked up on that, that, that uh, uh, you know, our impact is minimal from an environmental perspective. And obviously socially, we're going to employ a lot of people uh, at this project. I think it's about a thousand during the build and about 500 during uh, operations. They're all going to come from that Copiapo region, et cetera. Before COVID, uh, Copiapo, the unemployment rate in Copiapo is about 10%. So they're all screaming out for more new projects. Um, and so that, that all works in our favour. To sum up then, for our viewers, could you give us sort of like a, a summary uh, statement of uh, the proposition here for, for interested, interested we, investors? Um, you know, there's some great factors that we've gone through um, as to why people are interested in your stock. Um, should uh, should tune in. Yeah, look, I mean, it's a hard question. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to... All CEOs would say, well, we're really undervalued. I mean, we're one of the most undervalued stories ever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, the market's the market. The gold price is the gold price. They're things that we can't control. I get inbounds from people all the time asking me oh, about gold price, about the market. And I just say, look, I cannot control that. 
All we can control is what we do on the ground is execute and deliver. If we do that, then, you know, you have to, as an investor, you have to have a fear, you know, a positive feeling for precious metals. Uh, a company like ourselves that's going to build a gold mine. And, and, and obviously what we're doing is we're building a starter mine. I mean, our, our throughput rate at uh, Phoenix is going to be 20,000 tonnes a day. Mm. At $1,500 gold price, that gives us a 32-year reserve. I mean, that's not optimal. So obviously we're looking at expanding the project, becoming a much bigger mine. We can do that with uh, acquiring more water. We're working on water options right now. So there are lots of catalysts for our story to grow and become bigger and, you know, for us to turn into a 250 to 300,000 ounce per annum gold producer is quite achievable uh, mm -hmm. with expansion. Um, but that all takes time. So if, if you're a, a trader, you know, a flipper of stocks, we're not the story for you. If you're an investor and you want to put some money away like I have, and I own, uh, right now, after this financing, I own about 6% of the company. And I've invested nearly $3 million Canadian of my own money in this company. Um, is, you know, you've got to be prepared to sit there and wait. Now, we built Rio Alto from $12 million to a $1.2 billion takeout. Could that happen again with Rio 2? Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know if that's what's going to happen, but that's what the potential is here to create value, but it's going to happen over time. So all I can say to viewers who like what they're hearing is, you know, pick a spot for when you want to come into this story, but it's not a quick flip, right? It's not a quick flip. It's not an exploration story of us drilling holes and, you know, the next day we're 30% up because of, because of a drill hole. That ain't going to happen with our story. But we're the methodical guys that are going to build a mine it's going to be quite attractive to us, to our shareholders, maybe to other people, other companies. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about trying to create value for our shareholders and um, and and just executing and delivering, as, as we say, we, 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 we will do. And if we can't keep to our guidelines or our guidance, then uh, we will let people know. But right now, uh, everything I've said is on track and... Um, you know, hopefully we can pull it off. You know, that's, that's, but this is a very simple gold project. That's the beautiful thing about this. Very simple, very easy. Yeah, it's very well, well put, Alex. Um, I think, you know, patient capital is always required in mining, junior mining, certainly. Um, but it's clear that you've got a very well structured plan in place uh, for the, for the carry out of the various phases uh, of constructing this mine. Um, so it's great to talk with you and thanks for taking time to update Assay TV on the Phoenix project. Yeah, and hopefully I can be back, you know, with with uh, milestone updates as we achieve them. Um, you know, we, we're not sitting on our hands. We're going to be lo doing lots of things. We intend to become a multi-asset precious metals company. I think being a one-asset company cannot be something that we maintain for a long period of time. Yep. So hopefully we, you know, we're always looking at projects, looking at other companies, and hopefully we'll be a part of consolidation in this sector and um, we'll be part of something bigger that will look a lot more attractive than just being one asset company. Um, and, um, yeah, so so I hope to be back with um, lots of news over the next uh, few months. Yeah, well, it's a good point there, Alex, you raised. Is that, is that, does that mean that you're, you'll be uh, opening up for further exploration elsewhere or is it more a case of some... Yeah, look, we, we announced uh, a few months ago about exploration that we've got a, uh, a concerted effort in Chile uh, because that's where we're operating. Um, but, uh, you know, we're looking at other jurisdictions. We're looking at throughout the Americas. Um, because of my background, we're also looking in Australia. Uh, we wouldn't... Uh, um, say no to something that made a lot of sense in Australia. And, and having multi-jurisdiction uh, assets is, is obviously better for shareholders who want to um, spread the risk out, you know, not being in one, one country, one asset. Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing that. Um, I've got a great team of technical guys that are always churning through on desktop reviews of projects, et cetera. So hopefully we can pull something off 
unfortunately, you've got to find a dance partner that's willing to dance. Um, there's not too many of those out there, um, but we, we will keep looking. And, um, and yeah, that's my objective is to become a part of something more interesting than just one, uh, one asset company. Fantastic. Excellent to have the long-term vision there. Alex, thanks very much. And yes, definitely we'll be catching up with you throughout the year on the progress with this and further exploration. Good to meet you, Adam. Thanks a lot. Stay safe, stay well, um, and talk to you soon. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, Alex.